Move over, GPT-4. There's a new kahuna in town. Google released Gemini, and it is as playful and curious as the Zodiac sign. Elon Musk needs a billion for his XAI, Altman is back, and IBM, Intel, NASA, and other tech giants are ganging up on OpenAI. There's also DARPA's plans for the moon, deep space defense tracking network, robots, language models, and a bunch more. I'm Nick, let's get busy. The first robot in Russia supporting artificial intelligence ChatGPT for Turbo. Personal assistant 21 inches or 55 centimeters tall with 8 degrees of freedom. Meet the updated Atom robot, the best solution for business and education with customizable roles. The robot can answer any question, gesture, express emotions, follow voice commands, recognize faces and react to gestures. Atom can be your assistant, helper, colleague, manager or blogger. You can create customized scripts for the Blender 3D robot or program it in the Atom Studio environment. You can control the robot with a controller or a virtual reality headset. Atom is a personal avatar in the best traditions of cyberpunk. All controls are fully intuitive. You can learn more and pre-order Atom Robot by clicking the link in the video description. The future is now. Tesla has unveiled a new version of its Optimus Gen 2 humanoid robot. The company hopes the robot will be able to help humans and be versatile enough to replace humans in heavy manufacturing. When this result will be achieved is not specified. The new version of the robot is equipped with actuators and sensors developed exclusively at Tesla. The robot is 22 pounds or 10 kilos lighter and 30% faster in walking. At the same time, the robot's balance has also improved. Tesla plans to use the robot in its manufacturing operations and start selling it if it proves its usefulness. Optimus is now undergoing comprehensive training with the help of neural networks and learning to perform new tasks, such as sorting objects autonomously. Elon Musk believes that the potential demand for such robots could reach 10 to 20 billion units. Moreover, it's the robot that should ensure Tesla's future growth and financial stability. It seems that soon we won't even bat an eye if a robot waiter serves us coffee or fixes our car. Did you know that the largest robot exhibition IRIX 2023 just closed? Here's a curtain call. It featured rescue robots, robots for the home, industrial avatars, anime, and just plain weird stuff you wouldn't get anywhere else except for, you know, Japan. Follow the link in the description and check out our complete guide to what's hot and what's not at IRIX 2023. When was the last time you gave Gemini a thought? If it's been a while, then Google got you covered because it unveiled its generative AI Gemini, which developers say is more powerful than GPT-4 and could surpass humans in the future. The developers say Gemini can code in Python, Java, C++, and it can create websites that dynamically reprogram themselves come new features. The Google team claims it has managed to create the first model that achieved a 90% success rate at MMLU, which is Massive Multitasking Language Understanding Test. It beat human experts by 0.2% as well as GPT-4 by 3.6%. Gemini's advantage was proven in a number of intellectually rigorous and problem-solving tasks across 57 knowledge areas including math, physics, history, law, medicine, and ethics. The advantage of the model is that it was originally designed as a multimodal model, meaning it can work with text, video, and audio. According to the presentation, when other models look at an image and think about it in words, Gemini takes notice of the nuances inherent to the medium. In the future, the model's perceptual domain will encompass both touch and haptic feedback. But is it really that abfab? It seems not quite. First users who have already tested a lighter version of Gemini in Google's chatbot Bard have reported deep disappointment. The neural network not only falsified facts when answering questions about 2023 Oscars, but also failed to follow simple instructions, such as coming up with a six-letter word in French. The AI produced a seven-letter word. On top of that, the video demonstrating Gemini's capabilities was edited, which was considered by some users, most likely Altman fans, as fake. In the video, the AI recognizes objects, tracks the dynamics of their appearance, and reasons while communicating with the user, cracking jokes and admitting to its own mishaps. The video description states, quote, For demonstration purposes, latency has been reduced and Gemini's responses have been shortened, end quote. 
Google spokesperson explained that all queries were real but truncated for brevity and the Gemini processed text queries that were voiced separately for the video and then recognized still images. However, from the video, a layman can gather that the neural network can casually keep up a conversation and is able to observe and react to objects in real time. Is this done for inspiration as Google claims or is it baloney? Who's inspired like that? What do you guys think? Leave your comments below to start a discussion. In the rapidly evolving AI race, Elon Musk is looking for a billion US dollars of investment for his artificial intelligence project XAI. The startup has already raised 135 million, which arguably is peanuts, since to compete with OpenAI, which has 10 billion planted in AI training infrastructure, Musk is gonna need more. Whether investors believe that the South African Iron Man will be able to compete with Altman, time will tell. For now though, Grok is known more for its peculiar sense of humor than for coming close to GPT 3.5 in benchmark testing. Obviously, XAI should not be underestimated. It has a strong team from former developers of the same OpenAI and Google DeepMind. But will investors now lean towards Musk's chutzpah more than Altman's success, whose company recently trademarked GPT-6 and GPT-7? By the way, the Altman scandal is still going strong. The other day, the New Yorker published an article written by a journalist who temporarily took a job at OpenAI for the sake of information. In it, Charles DeWig claims that a number of board members thought Sam Altman was not only lacking candidness, but in fact, quote, manipulative and treacherous, end quote. It's hard to say who the board members feared more, intelligent computers or an out-of-control Altman, the article says. This is kind of irrelevant now, though, since it's unlikely that anyone at OpenAI will try to oust Altman again. Perhaps the whole article is an echo of the discontent of those who tried to fire him. Check out Wall Street Journal and a certain Helen Toner for more. AI news doesn't end there. Recently, over 50 companies, including IBM, Intel, Oracle, AMD, NASA, Sony, Meta, as well as Harvard, Yale, and other universities, have formed an alliance to oppose the giants of the market in the face of OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google. From a bird's eye view, this looks like an attempt by the underdogs to play catch up with the leaders through pooling significant resources. The official objective of the alliance, though, is open source R&D available to all. The new consortium also announced support for researchers around the world, with short-term goals being the creation of a variety of multilingual and multimodal AI models designed for research in different science areas. Well, hold it! Doesn't that remind you of something? Six letters, starts with an O, ends with an I, and was founded as a non-profit for the good of humanity. Wink wink, nudge nudge. Moving on to more physical news now, the AUKUS partnership agreement between USA, UK, and Australia has provisions for building nuclear submarines, but also for a global tracking network for deep space defense. Who'd have thunk it? And what is it exactly these fine, upstanding, and concerned governments are planning to protect in deep space? Here's the rundown. Each of the participating countries will build a tracking station on its territory that will have higher sensitivity, better accuracy, increased bandwidth, and more flexible tracking than current radar systems. This should allow AUKUS nations to identify potential threats to both military and civilian satellites and systems, help deter conflict, better address space traffic management issues, and support a growing commercial space sector. The hype around space is on the rise as well, despite a slower pace than AI, but still. To infinity and beyond. More military stuff for ya. UK Ministry of Defense wants to integrate ChatGPT into close quarters combat simulation robots. SimStriker is a system of sensors and interactive targets in labyrinth-like corridors and rooms. The robots here are not just dummies. They are motorized and equipped with hit sensors that record the accuracy and rate of fire. These robots can detect motion, light, sound, as well as raise the alarm, return fire with non-lethal weapons, and even respond verbally. According to the commanders, SimStriker's chatty robot targets with AI brains will better prepare soldiers for real-world combat conditions and inherent surprises. On to civilian news, Digit, the Amazon robot, got a new job. Another retail giant, GXO Logistics, decided to give Digit a shot. So far, it's just a pilot project, and the robot is only tasked with transferring boxes from GXO's AMRs, which are autonomous mobile robots, to a conveyor belt. A spokesperson for the company made it clear recently that if you've ordered something from them in the last two weeks, it's likely that your product has passed through the robot's hands. 
Digit's mission is not as simple as it seems. Developers don't know in advance what kind of flooring their client's warehouse will have, nor do they know the level of lighting, the width of the aisles, or what kind of shelving or mobile robots will be used. All of these should put Digit's design and reliability to the test. Yet, GXO is optimistic and says it's ready to entrust the robot with new tasks and even have a direct line of communication with the AMR fleet manager. It's a slow start, but the company sees humanoid robots as the perfect bridge towards islands of automation. More on space. The US General Accounting Office has done the math and concluded that the moon landing mission scheduled for 2025 is going to have to take a rain check until 2027. This is due to the fact that Stanley Kubrick died and NASA had problems casting the right director. I kid, I kid. The third Artemis mission is being led down by contractors. Both developers of the human landing system for astronaut transportation to the surface of the moon are way behind on their deadlines. The first one being SpaceX because of Starship's failures. Although everyone and NASA knew from the get-go that Musk's deadlines are notoriously ambitious. But he's not the only one holding up the line. Axiom, the company that's responsible for developing spacesuits, still hasn't gotten off the ground with its end of the bargain. They don't even have a prototype. Seems like Axiom employees are fans of Charles Lamb, who among other things is famous for saying, I always arrive late at the office, but I make up for it by leaving early. Talking about time management, DARPA isn't wasting any time. It's selected 14 companies, SpaceX included, to design lunar infrastructure. Get this, in the next seven months, the lucky chosen ones will have to develop and present a project for self-sustaining lunar architecture in the next decade. Each company will have a different objective such as communication, navigation, or mining. Bottom line, by mid-2030s, DARPA wants to understand exactly how to deploy and maintain integrated infrastructure on the moon for quote, thriving commercial economy, end quote. Yeah, DARPA, okay, we'll pretend that at a time when everyone's talking about the strategic importance of space and its military application, you're oblivious to it all. Only selling moon rocks and fixing Wi-Fi is what you're looking for. The developers of the animal robot from Swiss Mile decided that even a fast, energy-efficient robopod is not the limit. Swiss Mile engineers decided to turn their robot on wheels into a shapeshifter. Whether you need a four-legged or a two-legged companion, they got you covered. Many companies go the other way, namely by attaching a robotic arm or two to the robot's back. But not Swiss Mile. First, they decided to explore the limits of the robot's limbs. As a result, the robot was able to accurately press an elevator button with its wheel, open doors, and even throw boxes into containers in a way that would make airport baggage handlers proud. But it's not just animal skills themselves that are interesting. It's how the engineers managed to teach it. They developed a new approach they called curiosity-based learning. Essentially, it's reinforcement learning where the robot is rewarded for successfully completing a task except that it has to figure out how to accomplish it entirely on its own, based on trial and error. To incentivize it, engineers encourage the robot to play with any objects at its disposal, as long as it's related to the end goal. Just gotta set a few key variables, point to the objects that might be relevant, give the robot a goal, and let it go hog wild. This sounds super fun, but also kinda creepy. What's your take? Researchers from Jordan and Qatar have developed a 600-foot, 200-meter-tall solar tower capable of generating clean energy 24-7. It combines an upflow solar tower and a downflow cooling tower combined in one structure. The solar upflow system works by heating the air at ground level and then using the hot air that rises to direct it up a tall tower with turbines. The air is heated under a large roof that covers the collection area and is made of material to trap heat. On the other hand, a cooling tower with a downward flow forces the air downward to spin another turbine. This is accomplished by spraying a fine water mist into the surrounding air at the top of the tower, making it both cooler and heavier and directing it downward. In this case, the upflow tower is placed in the middle and is surrounded by 10 downflow towers located outside so that it can operate in both upflow and downflow modes at the same time. So far, there's a mock-up and a simulation test that showed about 753 megawatt hours of energy per year. The only drawback that we can see here is that you can't really plant it in your backyard now, can you? More on energy, over 50 years in the making and the world's largest fusion reactor, the JT-60SA Tokamak, is finally operational in Japan. Tokamaks are toroidal reactors that are among the main contenders for the title of the first commercially viable fusion power plants. 
They were first conceived by Soviet scientists back in the 1950s. By design, they're a large donut-shaped chamber surrounded by magnetic coils that compress plasma made up of hydrogen isotopes until it reaches pressures and temperatures found only inside the sun. Simple in theory, but extremely difficult to build a reactor that can sustain a fusion reaction of this magnitude. The JT-60SA is no exception and it's still far from being a full-fledged generator, but it can be used to, for example, test materials. Research is ongoing as thermonuclear energy is a long-time dream of mankind. Billions of dollars have already been spent on making it happen, but thus far, it remains a dream. A dream of clean and limitless energy. Here's another valuable development for humanity. German's Fraunhofer Institute for Communication, Information Processing, and Ergonomics developed Lucy. It's an add-on for drones, enabling quicker response to survivors at disaster sites. Basically, it's a set of MEMS microphones that can be mounted on the chassis of existing multi-rotor drones. The acronym in the name stands for Listening System Utilizing a Crow's Nest Array. In the current version, 48 robust mics are arranged in a special geometric pattern that optimizes the tool's ability to pinpoint the direction of a particular sound. It can even pick up frequencies that are unavailable to the human ear. At the same time, AI technologies block out distracting sounds such as wind, rescue equipment, and the drone's own rotors. The same algorithms look for screaming, banging, or popping noises that trapped survivors might use to draw attention to themselves. An updated version of the system is in the making and will include 256 microphones this time. Drones in general are becoming more useful. A group of scientists from the same institute recently proposed a project in which drones will prevent wind turbines from icing by spraying them with an environmentally friendly coating. According to the engineers, it's cheaper than building heating systems into the wind turbines. And drones can also deliver defibrillators faster than ambulances. This is already being used in Sweden. The fact is that if a person's heart stops beating outside the hospital, his chances of survival are less than 10%. What can save a life here is an automatic external defibrillator that can diagnose dangerous heart rhythms and restore normal heart function with an electric shock. Using them is easy as the devices themselves provide step-by-step -step voice instructions so that any passerby can use them correctly. These devices flew to ambulance call sites, and as a result, during the 11 months of the experiment, the drones got to patients before the ambulance did in 67% of cases, and once actually saved a person's life. Danish medical technology startup Ropka APS has released its first medical product, the Arthur Arthritis Treatment Robot, which is already being used in hospitals. The machine is based on the LBR Med Lightweight Arm and supports early diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis using robotic ultrasound. At the same time, no humans are needed. Arthur provides autonomous examination and can fill the shortage of specialists in clinics. Wayland has released its sixth version of its alpha dog robot pet, Baby Alpha. It's reported that each robo-pet will have a unique personality and will be able to express its emotions. Baby Alpha can also sing, dance, and play with its human. In addition, the robot will be able to make FaceTime calls. And yet, after the legendary Ibo, the design of the robot seems a tad underdeveloped. Yay or nay? There's more, but we're out of time. Subscribe to the channel, join the discussion on Telegram, like our videos, and come back again for more news from the world of high tech. Until next time, bye-bye.